Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Felicia. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you see one of my previous videos and you're a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about all the things we're doing around our home to prepare for the cooler months. You know, here in New Jersey, right now the weather is kind of doing that up and down thing where one minute is decent outside, meaning in the 60s, and then in the next minute is freezing in the 40s. So we haven't quite gotten full into like fall weather slash winter just yet. However, we're still kind of getting prepared around here. So, you know, we're making sure we have enough of our pumpkin spice drinks, our hot chocolate. We have our cozy sweaters, our nice comfy little throw blankets, our cute little fuzzy slippers. But then I realized, what about all these plants that I purchased over the summer quarantine period? Now, a year ago, I didn't have any plants. I'm only about six months or so into this whole new plant life thing, which I love. So it is gonna be pretty interesting because I very much want each of my plants to survive, all 20 plus of them. So I'm really hoping that some of the things I'm gonna share with you today are the things that are gonna help keep these plants safe and alive and winter ready. So keep on watching. So one of the first things that came to mind when it comes to getting these plants ready for the winter was of course taking any plants that I have currently on the windowsill off, removing any plants I have close to our little doorway here, away from the door, taking them out of any environment that's very cool, whether it's next to a window or a drafty door, just bringing them back a bit. Because again, right now it's not so bad, but I know as we move into the cooler season and you know the holidays come, I'm, I'm not saying I'm gonna do this, but I don't want my plans to slip my mind as I'm celebrating the holidays. So, you know, one of the things we're doing right now is just kind of like playing a bit of musical chairs, if you will, with our plants. Now, if you can see over my shoulder, we have our Birds of Paradise plant there. It wasn't previously there. Before that, we had our Ficus Elastica Ruby, one of our ZZ plants, and a couple of Anthuriums in that space. But what we decided to do was kind of swap the Ficus Elastica with the Birds of Paradise. I have the Ficus Elastica like a ruby right next to a door which leads to our balcony. Now I'm not saying it's gonna be its permanent home, but I do think that the Ficus Elastica has a fighting chance in the event any cold air or drafts come through the door more so than our Birds of Paradise. So I decided to just put the Birds of Paradise here for now. I don't mind the location. I actually think it's really pretty because I kind of, this where you see me sitting here now, I typically use this space whenever I'm doing Zoom meetings with my colleagues or any of our, you know, partners. I don't typically face like my home, just, you know, to maintain some level of privacy. Like they don't need to see everything we got going on here. So I just feel like it's a nice little backdrop, you know, to kind of show my interest in plants and all the other things that I love and adore. So that's the current home for our Birds of Paradise and our Farkas Elastica Ruby. Now I'll show you some of the other changes we've made around our home as far as moving plants to different locations. So starting with the Birds of Paradise, as I mentioned before, we moved it over to this side of the living room. It's right next to my um, desk that I use to work from home and also sometimes use as my filming area. And then next up we have the Ficus Elastica Ruby. I pretty much just swap places between the Birds of Paradise and this Ficus Elastica. So I thought this will be a better fit for it, at least for now. And then moving into our bedroom, we have these three floating shells that we recently ordered from Amazon. Um, as you can see there, we have our money tree, which was previously in our living room, but it was also next to a window. So I definitely wanted to move it as far away from a draft as possible. So there it is. And then right next to that, which you'll see in a second, is this little mini pothos, which I did purchase recently. I wanted to add some more greenery to our bedroom. And then finally, this other money tree. It was always in our room, but we just decided to hang it up. So as you saw in the video, one of the other things we recently incorporated into our home were those floating shelves. Now I've been wanting to get some floating shelves for a while, not just for our plants, but I just like the look of floating shelves. I think they're really cute. You know, you don't have a whole bunch of things and wires and stuff dangling. So I just thought it would be really nice to have our plants propped up on those floating shelves. As you saw, we have both of our money trees there and as well as the a new plant I recently purchased. I know I said I wasn't gonna get any more plants, but I couldn't help it. But anywho, I just thought it'd be nice to add some extra greenery to the walls in our bedroom specifically while taking them away from windowsills and away from any drafty doors. 
If you'll remember from my previous indoor plant tour video, I did have my money tree actually on this shelf here behind me, which is close to a window. Um, I do have a couple of plants, a few plants actually, um, on this shelf and I'm still deciding where I want to move those to, but for now I think they're fine there and I think the money trees and the little mini pothos plant is fine in our room. We may kind of do some additional moving around, but for now we're happy with where things are today. So one of the other things we thought about in getting our plants prepped and ready for the cooler weather is humidity. As of now, our Caletha ornata is the only plant that requires a certain level of humidity. So what we're doing is using our essential oil diffuser, which we purchased, I believe from Home Goods a couple years ago. We're actually using this to double as a humidifier. And it's pretty easy, it's essentially the same thing. You're using it as an essential oil diffuser. All you do is you add a couple of drops of your favorite oils. We typically use like peppermint or eucalyptus oil in here. And it just gives the room a nice fragrance while providing that extra humidity. But for the purposes of our plant, what we're doing is we're just simply putting water in the little tray here, no essential oils, and we have it placed next to our Calathea ornata, hence giving it that extra humidity that it needs. So in addition to using the humidifier, sometimes I would also bring the calathea into the kitchen with me whenever I'm cooking. As you know, if you're you know, cooking things on the stovetop or in the oven, it does create some extra heat, therefore creating some additional humidity in that space. So you know, right now we're trying to give that plant as much humidity as it needs, but not too much humidity because again, I'm really trying my best to keep that plant alive, all my plants for that matter, but because the calathea is such a temperamental plant <laughs> we want to make sure that we're doing all the right things to keep it good for the cooler weather months so one of the other things we're doing is just ensuring that our plants are getting enough light now as i mentioned in the previous video we don't have a south facing window so i did have to purchase a grow light just to ensure that each of our plants are getting sufficient light and that has been working amazing for us i love our grow light but in addition to the grow light, I also had a grow light bulb. I just kind of had it. I wasn't really using it, but I just wanted to get it in the event I needed to, I ain't gonna lie, in the event I got more plants and I needed some additional light. That's why I got the grow light bulb. I'm actually using the grow light bulb now because I recently went out to one of our big box stores nearby. I purchased the clamp light, a pretty small one. It's only about five and a half inches. It's here behind me, but if you can't see it, I'll insert a little clip right here. Right now we're using it specifically for the Birds of Paradise plant here behind me. Again, just making sure that plant has sufficient lighting needs. I was using it previously with the original grow light we have, but to avoid having to transport it back and forth across our living room, I just wanted to give it its own little lighting setup. Hopefully the grow light bulb performs just as well as our grow light. Again, I really love that grow light. If I have to purchase another one, I will do that, but for now, the grow light bulb and the clamp light is working perfectly fine for us. And then lastly, one of the things I'm making sure we have in place before things get crazy weather-wise is enough plant supplies. So I talk about this in every single one of my plant-related videos, but neem oil. Right now we do have one bottle. It's still fairly full, but I'm probably more than likely gonna run out and buy one or two more bottles just to make sure that we're set for the winter season. Now I don't anticipate using all three bottles in such a short period of time. I probably don't need that much, but I remember when I was first looking for neem oil here in our area, I went to like two or three different stores and I could not find it anywhere. I think it was just selling out that easily. So when I finally found that, I believe we got like two bottles at once. So that's the reason why I figured, you know what, let me just get a few, even if we don't use them during the winter weather, at least we'll have it for next summer. So for sure neem oil. And one of the reasons why I love neem oil, perfect example is this right here. Our Birds of Paradise recently came down with a case of spider mites and I'm so glad that I caught it when I did. So what I did was I took some neem oil and a little bit of water and I used that to wipe down each of the leaves to make sure I got all the bugs off of my leaves and then I followed that up with pesticide. Now the neem oil isn't necessarily an essential step in getting rid of you know, spider mites or any type of pests that your plants experience. But again, I just really like using the neem oil. And I also just use it to wipe down my leaves just to kind of shine them up. So neem oil is definitely a multi-purpose, multi-use supply here in our home. So we have our neem oil. And one of the other things I'm probably gonna get is just a small bag of soil. 
not to purchase any new plants or anything, but I just figure having a nice small bag of soil just in case I decide I want to propagate a plant, which again, I mentioned before, I'm not really a propagation person, but I have recently, and I didn't share this before, but I have been propagating my Hawarthia attenuata. Now I showed you in my indoor plant video that we did have a Hawarthia attenuata, which was growing beautifully. We love that plant so much, but unfortunately guys, it did not make it. We had a little situation, I'll talk about it in another video, but the plant didn't survive, unfortunately. I'm so glad that I noticed that plant was, you know, growing like a little offshoot. So what we did was we decided to remove that offshoot, plant it in some soil in this little tiny pot here. And we've been growing this now for, I wanna say almost three months, and it's been doing really well. It's grown so much in that period of time. You know, when it comes to certain succulents like zebra plants, they don't require a ton of light. So we do keep it on the shelf here in the corner away from direct sunlight. Um, but it's been doing really well. And I figured, you know, if it continues to grow, eventually I'll want to move it into a slightly larger pot. But we'll see how this goes. I'm really hoping that this plant survives because I really, really like that Horathea plant. So sad. And then finally, one of the last supply items we're gonna make sure we have in our arsenal is some distilled water for our Calathea plant. I don't think any of our other plants in our collection require distilled water other than the Calathea. So we'll probably just go out and get a couple gallons worth of water just to make sure it's good for the rest of the season. All right guys, so that's everything that we're doing to make sure we get our plants winter ready. If you feel that I've missed any crucial steps or anything that I've overlooked unknowingly, Definitely leave your feedback down below. I always welcome feedback again because I'm still a pretty new plant parent. I'm only about six months in. I feel like once I reach the year mark, then I'll stop saying I'm a new plant parent because by then hopefully I'll kind of know everything there is to know about each of these plants. Unless I get some new plants. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.